Hey, hey, hey guys, Grandmaster G here, and this is your video for quadratic functions, and this is actually the video for graphing quadratic functions that are in vertex form. Okay, so uh, a couple of vocabulary terms we need to get through first. So the first one is a parabola, next one is vertex. So guys, quadratic functions are um, functions that we can write, basically they're the polynomial functions. So what I mean by that is if we can write a, a function in this format of um, ax squared, plus bx plus c, that would be a um, quadratic function, and then we would graph these. The graph of a quadratic function, if I had to graph this function, a graph of a quadratic function is um, a parabola. So it's a u-shaped, like so, okay? So it is a u-shaped uh, graph. It can be upside down, it can be um, right side up, where it's face making a u or kind of like an upside, or kind of like an n. Um, and that is what every uh, quadratic function would make a U-shaped graph. And that U is called a parabola. Okay, parabola. Also, another vocabulary term you know is vertex. Um, we've seen that word before. Okay, it's the lowest or highest point on a parabola. So this particular parabola right here, the vertex would be the lowest point, which is right here. Okay, that is the vertex. And then it goes up on the left side and goes up on the right side. Okay, it can also, if my parabola is upside down, then it would be the highest point on the parabola. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to work on graphing uh, quadratic functions. We're going to start simple just to kind of show you what happens here. So we're first, we're going to graph the parent function of y equals x squared. Okay, so let's just graph, um, let's see here. I'll graph the points negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay, so if I were to graph these points right here, uh, if I were to plug in negative 2 in for x, so again, I just have an input-output table to graph it just to kind of show you what's going to happen here. Um, negative 2 squared is going to be a positive answer because a negative times a negative is positive, and 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 squared would give me 1, 0. 1 squared would give me 1, 2 squared would give me 4. If I went further on and went to 3, 3 squared would give me 9. So if I plot these points here, 0, 0, I have negative 1, 1, positive 1, 1, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, and positive 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. If we notice, this is symmetrical on each side of the vertex. My vertex is 0, 0 on this particular graph. Okay, so this is my parent function. Okay, so this is this the standard quadratic function of y equals x squared. It does make a parabola, it is a u, but the left side is, is symmetrical to the right side. Okay, so this line going down the middle through my vertex is actually known as the axis of symmetry, and we'll look at that later. So the vertex for this particular graph is 0, 0. Okay, so here's my parent function. We just did that by graphing by using an input-output table. I'm going to show you guys shortcuts, though. Okay, um, let's look at another one here. So now let's see, what do you guys think might happen here? Take a second to think. What do you think is going to happen if I have negative x squared? Okay, and... Um, just kind of take a moment and think about that. Let's go ahead and plot these same points. Okay, and what's going to happen, you guys, is now I'm just going to get negative values from what I had before. Okay, so now I'm going to get negative 4. Now I'm going to get negative 1, 0, negative 1, negative 4. Okay, and so what it does is it flips my, gra my graph upside down. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to flip my, my graph upside down, so now I have an upside down U. And again, my vertex is still 0, 0. Okay. So again, this is just me graphing by making an input-output table and showing what values I'm going to get for certain values of X and certain values of Y. And it does make that parabola, that U-shaped graph, because it's the X squared. Now, um, what do you guys think happens? So if I have a negative x squared, that's when I flip. That's when it's going to be an upside down graph. Now, what do you think? Let's take a look. Now I have x squared plus 2. So I'm using the same exact values, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay. So now, if I were to use these same values and graph them, before we got, let me graph what we had before. Let me graph our parent function here. So before, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the parent function that we did before. Okay. So this right here is the graph of y equals x squared. Well, what if I wanted to graph y equals x squared plus 2? So let's now fill in our input-output table and see what, what this plus 2 is going to do to our original graph here. So how is that going to transform it? I'll do this one in purple. Okay, so if I have negative 2 squared plus 2, 
This is 4. Sorry, my pen is kind of... 4 plus 2, which is 6. So I went from negative 2, 4. Okay, I'm sorry, I went from negative 2, 4 to negative 2, 6. Okay, now negative 1 squared is 1 plus 2 is 3. So negative 1 is going to be at 1, 2, 3. 0 squared is 0 plus 2 is 2. So if we notice, I'm just moving everything, and now my right side can be the exact same. I'm just moving everything up 2. So that plus 2 on the outside of my x squared shifted my graph up two spaces. Okay, my vertex is now 0, 2. Okay, so we shifted up 2. Every single point has moved up two spots. Okay, and that's true because of this. that's what this plus 2 did. Okay, let's take a look at another one here. So now if I have that plus 2, but now it's inside some parentheses right here. So I have an x plus 2, and then I square it. So again, I'm going to graph our parent function in red, like what we had before. So this is just the graph of x squared. So here's my graph of x squared. Okay, so there's y equals x squared. And now I'm going to show what happens when we add 2 on the inside the parentheses when it looks like this. So again, let's do the exact same x values. Negative 1, I'll go 0, 1, 2. So if I were to plug in negative 2 here, I'm, my parentheses are going to equal 0. Because negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So this is going to give me 0 squared, which is just 0. We'll do this one in purple, sorry. Okay, so negative 2, 1, 2, 0. So right now, this has moved down quite a bit. So let's see what else happens here. Negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1 squared, which is just 1. So negative 1 is going to give me the point 1 right here. Okay, 0 plus 2 is 2 squared. It's 4. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If we look, we're taking all these points and just shifting them over 2 to the left. Let's see here. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm going to stop there because my next one's going to be 16. It's going to be way off this graph. So if I graph, I have the right side of my parabola. Well, we can probably assume that the left side, this is my vertex, and the left side's going to be symmetrical. But I can plug in negative 3 real quick just to check and make sure that it's going to start going back up here. Negative 3 plus 2. is negative 1 squared, which is just 1. So yep, now it's going to start going back up. Okay, So that plus 2 inside the parentheses shift my graph 2 to the left, and my vertex is now negative 2, 0. Okay, so what we can do, you guys, is we can use um, vertex format for this. Okay, also known as HK form. We've seen this with absolute value functions. It is the same, okay, where the H and the K give us our vertex, okay, and our vertex is always negative HK. So what I mean by that is it's always the opposite of whatever the H is. So for example, right here, we had plus 2, so I actually shifted it to the left instead of to the right, like we would assume. And so my vertex was negative 2, 0. I did the opposite of whatever my h value was. Okay, so that's why we have negative hk, because the positive 2 meant that my vertex was at negative 2. Okay, and then if we look at this one, for this was on the outside, this would be k right here, this positive 2, and that just stays as positive 2. Okay, so vertex form, this changes um, the shape of the u. We'll talk about that later. Okay, so the A changes the shape of the U. But for HK form right now, we call this vertex form. And we just want to find the vertex of our parabola, and then we just graph it from there. Okay, so real quick, if I had the graph, let's just call it X minus 4 squared plus 1. If I wanted to find the vertex, I would take the opposite of whatever is inside the parentheses of my X value. So this negative 4 would then be positive 4 for my X, and then take the Y value on the outside. There's my vertex, that's where my graph starts, and then it would be opening up in that same U shape. Okay, so let's take a look here. So here I have a graph Y equals X minus 3 squared plus 1. I want to find the vertex first, and then I plot points on both sides of the vertex. So first, let's find that vertex. The vertex is 
um, positive 3 because it's the opposite of my h. So that negative 3 means it's going to shift to the right. So it's positive 3 and positive 1. So my vertex is 1, 2, 3, 1. There's the starting point of my graph. Because it's not negative, because it's going to be opening, so this means it's going to be opening upwards. If there was a negative in front, it would be opening downwards. Because it's not negative, there's two ways I can do this. I can then pick two points on each side of my graph and make my XY table real quick and just plot those. Okay. So on the left side, I've got negative 2, negative 1. So I want to know when X is negative 2. I'm sorry, those are positive. I'm sorry. Positive 2, positive 1. And then also right here, X is 4 and 5. Okay, because this is when X is 4, X is 5. So I want to know what my Y values are going to be for those. So I want to know if my Y values are for 2 and 1 and 4 and 5. So I can plug in this value into my equation and figure out what my Y is. If I do 2 minus 3 squared plus 1, it's going to give me negative 1 squared plus 1. That's going to give me 1 plus 1, which is 2. So when I plugged in 2, I got 2. So it just went up 1. It should be the same because this is my vertex. The right side should be the exact same. If I plug in 4 here, 4 minus 3 is 1. So 1 squared is 1 plus 1 is 2. So remember, the left side and the right side should be symmetrical from my uh, vertex. Okay. If I were to plug in 1, okay, or let's just let's plug in 5 instead because I know 1 is the same as 5. If I plug in 5, I get 5 minus 3, which is 2. 2 squared plus 1. That's 4 plus 1, which is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I get the point 5, 5, which means the 1 is the left side is symmetrical, so that would be 1, 5. Okay? And I have my graph. It's a parabola. It shifted to the right and up based on what my minus 3 and my plus 1 did to my graph. Same thing as the graphing absolute value functions. Okay, one trick, you guys. If there is nothing in front, if there's no A value, um, it's always going to go up 1 over 1 and then up, th up, um, up 1 over 1. And then you're going to go up. It's going to increase by 3 after that. Okay, but we'll show you what I'll show you what I mean by that. So positive one, negative two. So first my vertex is gonna be the opposite here, which is negative one, negative two. So negative one, negative two. And if you want to pause this and try it on your by yourself, pause it and try it by yourself. Okay. So now what I I can make my XY table. Okay, some of you will notice a pattern when you make these x, y tables. Okay, so for x, I have I want to know what it is for 0 and 1. Let's just do 0 and 1. And the reason why I can stop at 0 and 1 is I know negative 2 and negative 3 are going to give me the same values as 0 and 1 because it's symmetrical. This is my vertex, so the left side and the right side have to be the exact same. So if I were to plug in 0 plus 1 squared, that's going to give me 1 squared minus 2, 1 minus 2 which is negative 1. So at 0, I'm at negative 1, which means at negative 2, I'm also at negative 1, because this side has to be, this, my vertex is the same as my right side. Okay. If I were to plug in 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 squared is 4, minus 2 is 2. And I went up 3. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I went up 1, and now I'm going up 1, 2, 3. And it's going to be that way every single time where you go up one and then you go up three. There's my ugly U-shaped parabola. I'm sorry, I forgot my math joke, by the way. I just realized that, even though this is the last problem. So here's your joke. Why did the obtuse angle go to the beach? So why did the obtuse angle go to the beach? Because it was no, over 90 degrees. Boom, ching. All right. That being said, you guys, quadratic functions, okay? Uh, they do make a parabola, which is a U-shape. It is in HK format, which is the exact same thing as it was for absolute value functions. We find our vertex, and then we plot our points to the left and to the right. This one's a little bit more difficult because the slope isn't going to be the same. It's not straight lines. And so we need to make sure we make an XY table to double check our points on the left and the right. And let's do two points on each side. Hope this video helped, and good luck.